after you download the zip file uh, or the Excel template from Moodle, you open it, you should see something like this. And so you can also adjust the, the split of the Excel to make sure you can see all the windows. So at the bottom, those are the graphs. At the top, those are some basic input value, initial value. At the top right, those are the basic parameter of the epidemiology model. So this is actually not a differential equation model. This is kind of a, we can consider the discrete uh, uh, model. So, but the, the, but the simulation result is the same. So you will see three uh, virus strains called uh, uh, number one, number two, number three. So it's actually called, in fact, it's actually counted the patients, the number of patients with those, uh, oh, this is rabbit, sorry. The number of rabbits with the viruses. Now, if you just say one rabbit has a virus for the strain one, you put one there. You add, after you put one there, you see at the bottom how the virus change. So the host population, after you get this one virus, you're going to plumber decrease. Right? So, so there, you, you see the decrease. And then once the host uh, population decreases a lot, the virus is going to die with the host. And then if less virus, the host is going to bounce back. And they, when the host uh, bounce back, uh, there will be all more virus, and then you're going to kill more host, and the host is going to die down again. So this is going to fluctuate a little bit until it stabilizes. This is basically the, the classical population model, the, the predator prey model. Uh, when, when the bottom line of this is every time we know that's how eventually it's going to end, like, that's called equilibrium state. But when, when the population trying to reach that equilibrium state, it's almost every time it overcorrects itself. So it has to bounce back. So this, is, this fluctuation occurs simply because the, the overcorrection. This is happen if you recall some of us, unfortunately, when we try to first learn to drive, when we make a turn, we sometimes overcorrect it. And then we spin back to the other direction and realize overcorrect again, trying to spin back. That's basically the same thing happened here. And unfortunately, nature doesn't have a good way of driving. It's always overcorrect itself. That's how the fluctuation occurs. And on the right, you see that's the percentage of infections rate. So, so this should be just opposite of the host population side. When the host population goes down to the bottom, we should actually see the peak of the prevalence of uh, the, the, the infected people. When, when, mo when the infected uh, individual is at the highest, that must be the population dip to the, the, the lowest point, the local lowest point. These two, in fact, uh, the blue line and the red line, they should be more or less uh, opposite to each other. Okay, so this is for strain one. If we now, if we put a strain one at zero, if we put a strain two, we actually should see a similar figure, except I mean, depend on the virulence, it's the fluctuation degree will change a little bit, but the same story. If we put uh, put a zero again in the number two, we put in number three, it's the same thing, yeah, similar. Uh, it's just the degree of variation uh, change. So you, you can actually, at the bottom, you can see the percentage of change. So uh, number th oh, those are the individual. That's the percentage. Uh, you can also uh, probably change some of the carrying capacity value by see how this change. And this is actually a critical point of that uh, carrying capacity for the epide epi epidemic to occur. So there's a threshold for that. Now, the interesting part is occur when you introduce multiple uh, infection. If we say, in, if we have three strains, number one, number two, number three, both of them have one individual infected. And in the end, you will see, the, or, uh, actually you can see at the bottom. In the end, uh, strain one and three become zero. They, they just disappeared from the population. Only strain number two will win out. That's actually part of the lab uh, exercise to figure out why strain number two will win. Uh, you, may see, you may think, well, if, if we put, say, strain number one is 100, strain number three is 100, 
can the number two still win? If you look at the end, that doesn't change. It still wins in the end. If the basically the sim simulation run longer enough, that's actually the number two still wins. Uh, why is that? <laughs> you you will see. <laughs> there's a there, well. There's actually a. So this kind of model, people have studied uh, probably half a century now. There's actually, if you Google, you will you'll get uh, probably a lot of things you, <laughs> you either need to know or don't have time to know. <laughs> there will be a lot of information on this, why that's the case. There actually is some theoretical answer to why this happened. And, and people still study a lot. In fact, I can, I, 100 is not, let me put 1,000 with that change thing here. You still see the zero. It still doesn't change. Number two still wins. In fact, if you look at the graph on the right, you can actually see it happen very fast. Uh, number three, I believe, is the green line here. That I put a thousand initially, it's pretty high, and it dipped pretty quickly. It goes down pretty quickly. So those numbers that you always make the number Yeah, pre prevalence of each strain. And the top table is right. Here. Yeah, 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 yeah. So those are the initial at the time zero. I studied with uh, number two strain have only one individual, one rabbit with number two virus. Uh, a hundred rabbits with number one uh, viruses. And the number three, I put a thousand. Uh, if you don't like put number one, a hundred, we can also put a thousand. It's just slow down the process, but eventually number two still wins out. And well, you can see the number two uh, is a red one, I believe. It does much better than number three. And number three basically drop, drop down pretty fast. Number two actually fluctuate, but trying to compete with number uh, number one, sorry, the red, fluctuate, try to compete with the orange line, but eventually it's going to lose out. But the, the, it loses out more slower than the, the green line. The green is just too... Uh, this is because the, the number three is too uh, too high mortality. It just killed the host. It, it killed the host and it's going to die with the host. So, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so number three is just uh, too strong for the host. It killed the host and it's also bad for itself to spread out. And uh, number one is uh, is is it's lose out because it's too mild. And, and unfortunately, for virus. Its uh, virulence seems to be also associated with its ability to uh, uh, be infectious. Yeah, so that's all happened to be associated. So if it's less virulent, it also have less chance to infect the host. So it's eventually lose out because of that. And number two seem to have the good balance to not too extreme, but not too mild either, and it wins in the end. But then that initial. You can call that latency, I guess. Yeah. yeah. In, in, in basically, it, I mean, if actually that's uh, if you put a one, you, you will see this process is much faster, right? right. Yeah. It basically so all it does is basically just uh, how fast the number two will win. Ah. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, you can also change some carrying capacity on the right. So right now I have a carrying capacity of two thousand. Uh, 20,000. If I change this to, uh, say, 15,000, it doesn't change too much. But if I really decrease this a lot, if I decrease this, say, 3,000, you don't see epidemics anymore. That's certainly below the threshold. So you can think about, let's say there's a virus coming to Atlanta, but Entire Atlanta just have two people. Not one people had virus try to spread to the other people. That chance for it happening is going to be very small, right? Two people are very small. If there are four people, the chance is going to be a little bit higher, right? If there are how many? One million. <laughs> that chance is almost certain <laughs> going to happen, right? So basically, but before between that one million and that two people, there is a number. Right there, it should be below that number, it won't happen. Above that number, it's more likely to happen. 
that will be a threshold, basically. Yeah. So if you if you adjust that number, you actually can find that threshold here. Yeah. So very interesting exercise actually. Let me see. Uh,